Life in England these days is inflationary. But we're carrying on regardless, coping with misgovernment and idiocy on every side. <sighs> Carnation from Floris. Not all the good things have disappeared. Occupying a dubious space in pop culture as one of two likely candidates for most comprehensible punk movie alongside Repo Man, Jubilee is also much more than it initially appears. The film begins in Elizabethan England, where Liz herself is aided by court magician John Dee in receiving a vision of a distant dystopian future. Jenny Runnaker, in dual roles both as the Queen and her future self, lords over a chaotic group of punks, including Jordan, playing Amyl Nitrate, and Toya Wilcox. Now my friend Mad on the sofa is a pyromaniac, but she thinks she's a revolutionary out to better the world. I'm not so sure. The boys in the bed are Sphinx and Angel. They're from Deptford and Brothers. Their relationship is quite peculiar, but they're nice enough. <coughs> And over there at the wash basin is Chaos, our French au pair. A very, very young Adam Ant appears as a fresh-faced musician, attracting the interest of this Svengali-like Borgia Gintz in the film's most cohesive plotline. <laughs> it's power, babe. Power. I don't create it. I own it. But the real star is the frenetic and infectious Chaos of this tight-knit ad hoc family. Directed by artist filmmaker Derek Jarman, Jubilee is a shining example of his skill at spotting talent and bringing it into his fold. And of course, Adam Ant is one such find. In fact, I think the first recorded Adam Ant track was actually demoed for this film. Jarman's most famous find is Tilda Swinton, who appears in his later films. But here, the motley cast is drawn from disparate and sometimes opposed parts of London's vibrant punk scene. Jordan, playing Amor Nitrate, was an assistant at Malcolm McLaren's shop, for instance. The slits appear in a brief scene. In this regard, the character's close queer family kind of reflects Jarman's own. Through these figures and a chaotic shooting schedule, which led to scenes like this actually wasted crowd and a real fight caught on film, Jarman's movie is an effective portrait of the punk scene, albeit from an outsider's perspective and more in a tonal sense than in terms of its plot actually having any relation to reality. And strangely enough, the London recorded in this film no longer exists either. At times, it's unrecognisable. Many of the dilapidated brownfield sites featured have now been redeveloped, and so our own future is quite different to Jarman's imagined one. The film is also a bold step in Jarman's own artwork. A more accessible film than his explicit, experimental Latin feature Sebastian, Jubilee also picks up on several themes more closely explored in later work, like magic, dystopia, and poetry and dance as storytelling tools. And you know what? More than that, it's wildly fun. Seriously, this is the most fun you'll ever have watching an art house film. Veering between styles, ideas, and full of these scene-stealing performances, <laughs> there is nothing reverent about Jubilee, and it shouldn't be treated as such. <laughs> it's like pornography. Get some of your mates around and plough through this punk, queer, British classic. <laughs>